wow, I didn't even think about things that might be living in this tunnel. Oh yeah, we're gonna smell them. <laughs> what? Levi, are you serious? There's a tunnel 60 feet underground in a frozen Alaskan hillside. The US government dug this tunnel 60 years ago, and to this day, access is tightly controlled. As a physics student at MIT, I never, not once, learned about permafrost. And yet, after visiting this tunnel, I would argue it's one of the most important areas of research on the planet. Because what happens to permafrost is gonna affect all of us. Hey, I'm Diana, you're watching Physics Girl, and I'm gonna take you inside. Thanks to KiwiCo for sponsoring today's video. More about them later. Yeah, this is the, the coldest morning we had here. I know, it's kind of cold this morning. So we're in a little place called Fox, Alaska. It's um, also mm -hmm. called kind of the gateway to the Arctic. Dog life goes hand in hand with living in Alaska. And dog is life. <laughs> dog is life, yeah. We're switching parkas out and then- Yep, um, and we got to put on a hard hat just in case. We All right. Good to go. Let's so go. sometimes okay. there's a fan on, sometimes there's not. Oh good, for now there's not, so we can kind of <laughs> oh start up here. You'll smell. Oh wow. Yeah. Wow, that is stinky. <laughs> it's a little bit like manure, but not in a bad way. In a bad way. A week after we got home, I randomly texted Levi, the tunnel smells like dog poop. That's what the smell is. It suddenly occurred to me because I was unpacking and the wool long underwear that you have to wear in Alaskan winters still reeked like the tunnel. Levi didn't text me back. It looks alien somehow. I know, I love it. And this is the only one in the world. This is the only permafrost tunnel in the world, which begs the question, what's permafrost? So permafrost by definition is any part of the subsurface that is permanently frozen for two years or more. Okay, so every floor in this tunnel, every wall, all the soil, the rocks, roots, plants, everywhere you look is like a permanent freezer. And in fact, the dirt here has been frozen since the last ice age. More on that in a bit. But first, I wanna explore how this Cold War tunnel became an urgent research lab, how permafrost is related to a mysterious anthrax outbreak in Russia, how a local house collapsing nearby is connected to all of this, and why billionaires are throwing millions at permafrost science. If none of that piques your interest and you were just looking for a video about frozen dirt, well, you found the right video too. So firstly, why did the US military dig a tunnel that doesn't lead anywhere? And why are people rarely allowed inside? The permafrost tunnel was excavated in uh, 1963 and it was actually a Cold War project. What? The US Army wanted to figure out if permafrost would be kind of an insulator for army equipment. About a year later, they decided it was in fact not a very good. <laughs> <laughs> the more stuff you put in here, the more people, the more bodies, it tends to heat up. And there was actually a, a little bit of a cave in way back when. When the army dug this tunnel, they didn't expect ground that collapses when it gets to room temperature. But they also probably didn't expect to have exposed pristine Seen frozen ground untouched for 50,000 years. Ground that is perfect for research. Pretty soon after, they handed it over to us. So we've been doing research for probably about 30, 40 years. Yeah. Amazing. Seems like a pretty specific thing to study. We didn't have permafrost in Hawaii. Well, I had no idea, but in the Northern Hemisphere, about a fifth of the land is currently permafrost. Permafrost is found in Arctic and subarctic regimes. It's in Canada, Russia, Greenland, Nordic countries, Antarctica, and it goes deep. What, like 30 feet? 100 feet? No, dude, over 2,000 feet in Alaska. Permafrost is everywhere. And so the army dug this tunnel and then they passed it over for research. And access is tightly controlled because, you know, the tunnel is technically a mine, but also because everything in here is fragile, even the walls. You could bring a hairdryer in and do some serious damage. You know how when you put ice in a freezer and it shrinks over time? Does that happen it with does. The ice here? Okay. It does. This whole area, used to be flat. Oh, wow. And over time, it sublimated. Sublimating is when ice skips over melting and goes directly from a solid to a gas, which is what ice does in your freezer and what dry ice does. So these walls are sublimating. And we find that there's actually different sublimation rates for soil versus ice. You can see where the dirt is sticking out further than the ice. It actually has to be cooled now in the summer with giant refrigerators, not to mention, there are priceless mammoth tusks poking out of the walls like they charged from the other side and got stuck. 
Like I said, this is ice age permafrost. Before we get to the mammoth tusks, a quick message. Thanks to KiwiCo for sponsoring today's video. KiwiCo makes super cool hands-on projects and activities designed to expose kids to concepts in STEAM. Most people know me as a scientist, but growing up, I spent most of my time making stuff, doing arts and crafts, and when they overlapped with science, those were my favorite. Those are the kinds of activities that KiwiCo provides with their crates. KiwiCo is defining the future of play by making it engaging, enriching, and seriously fun. Clearly, I was the kid who tried to get as far as I could without instructions and then gave in when I knew I was about to make a mistake I couldn't recover from. Each monthly crate is designed by experts and tested by kids, and over 1,000 hours goes into developing every single crate. Because the crates are convenient and include everything you need, they're a great resource for learning at home. There's detailed kid-friendly instructions and an educational magazine filled with content to learn even more about the crate's theme. KiwiCo crates cover a wide variety of topics from month to month, so you always learn something new. Visit kiwico.com slash physicsgirl30 to get 30% off of your first month of any subscription. And now, back to the mammoth tusks. This is a really interesting part of the tunnel. We call it the boneyard. This is part of a mammoth tusk. They are not considered fossils. Actually, they are too young. So these are the actual bones then. These are the original bones perfectly preserved in permafrost. This is one of those magical examples where scientists are actual detectives and get clues like this to make pictures like this. Most of our tunnel, we're in the late Pleistocene. 40,000 years ago. Levi, are you seeing this? Ah, oh, she's touching it. Our main goal in life here is to find a saber-toothed tiger. So I get why the military has locked this up. And it's amazing seeing bones in person that have been extinct for thousands of years. But thawing permafrost is not just uncovering things that are dead. What we're smelling is actually microbes that are awakening and they're actually starting to munch on carbon. What does awakening mean? Not that I was worried. I was right. So right now we're about 10,000 years old. When we get to the end, we'll be about 40, 50,000 years old. Wow. So the smell actually <laughs> changes a little bit depending on which microbes we're smelling. Hold on. These are microbes that were frozen like 10 to 40, 50,000 years ago. Yep. And they are still alive. Yep. What? Absolutely <laughs> still alive. So I didn't know, but scientists have known for a long time that bacteria can be preserved in ice for millennia. Is there anything to worry about, about like zombie bacteria? <laughs> so there potentially could be. So the majority of the microbes that we have measured in the tunnel are non-toxic, are not a threat. They're just your normal average microbes that you know are living on your body. They just happen to be very old. There is the potential for some pathogens to be released. Mm -hmm. We have not found any here in the permafrost tunnel. Okay, well, good to know. <laughs> Meanwhile, in 2016, a crazy thing happened in a remote village of Siberia. Dozens of nomadic people there became mysteriously ill and thousands of reindeer began to pass away. The government soon realized they'd contracted anthrax, so families were airlifted out of the area. Officials didn't know exactly how the outbreak started though, because anthrax hadn't been seen in that area for decades. Anthrax is a pathogen, and it can survive freezing temperatures. So the leading hypothesis for what started the outbreak is bizarre. Rising temperatures thawed the permafrost, and along with it, a reindeer carcass that had been infected with anthrax decades ago. And as temperatures rise globally, permafrost will continue to thaw and will continue to get microbes waking up. Chances are they won't be dangerous, but it's just another side effect of rapidly changing temperatures in the Arctic. So this is actually sort of a buried pond. 15,000 year old pond twigs. The main character of this story is not the ancient anthrax waking up and it's not the mammoth tusks, it's literally H2O. You forget that these walls can be 70 to 90 percent water. Is there anything structurally risky about this sort of wall opening up? Not really. So the sublimation in here isn't a problem, but permafrost all over the world is withering away for a different reason. And it is a problem because it's actually thawing. There's a house nearby in Fairbanks, Alaska, collapsing in the middle out of nowhere because of the thawing. This is our biggest ice wedge. These parts of the wall that look alien are what scientists are particularly interested in. If this were to thaw, you would basically form a pretty large pond or a small lake. 
Here's a great example of thaw stable versus what's not gonna be stable. It just turns into mud. Which would you rather build your house on? Maybe this one's the prettiest one. An ice wedge forms when it's really, really, really cold, like negative 40 degrees okay. Celsius, negative 50. The ground actually cracks just a little bit. When it cracks, we get little tiny bits of water uh -huh. that can seep in, it'll and refreeze. It'll refreeze and, and then, then cracks crack will again. tend to form along that same area. Exactly. So the main attraction of the tunnel is all of its ice features, the history that they hold and the future that they will bring if they thaw over time. If you look at this massive ice wedge that's about 40,000 years old, this is a wonderful example of why permafrost degradation would be really bad for infrastructure. If this were to thaw, you very well could see an entire building swallowed into a sinkhole. You would see the roads start to get really bumpy and crack. In Alaska, there's a lot of whole villages that are being sort of sucked into the ground. News of dozens of sinkholes and exploding craters opening up all over Siberia is related to thawing permafrost. So you get these trees that were once straight up, they're starting to cave in on themselves. Uh, yeah, yeah, drunken forests. Scientists just found sinkholes opening up at the bottom of the ocean, the size of skyscrapers. Because I forgot to mention, but permafrost is found at the bottom of the ocean as well. We're seeing quite a bit of permafrost degradation just over the time scale of a few years. Okay, so permafrost thaws, the so landscape warps. Even on thaw stable permafrost, you're still gonna have just natural ground shifting, just because there's so much water. Alaska is literally changing elevation due to thawing permafrost. So figuring out what's gonna happen to permafrost as the planet warms is incredibly important. And people are starting to pay attention. It's a billion dollar industry now for repairing infrastructure related to thawing permafrost. Jeez. Some well-known donors are pledging $41 million to study the greenhouse gas emissions just from melting permafrost. And we've done massive, massive excavation the past few years, we've like quadrupled the size. Yeah. So what research are they doing here? So this is a great kind of test bed proxy for ancient times. Right. We can compare to what was going on 20 to 50,000 years ago. It's a really great comparison tool for what's going on on the surface now, because what we're seeing on the surface is just rapid change. So scientists are using the permafrost tunnel to figure out what's going to happen to permafrost all over the planet. Everyone that uh, deals with permafrost always has to talk about carbon. The soils in the Arctic just really naturally have a high amount of carbon that's kind of perfectly preserved. Literally plants and roots. Rising temperatures thaw permafrost, which releases trapped carbon, and that increases the amount of methane and CO2 in the atmosphere, which in turn affects global temperatures. It's a positive feedback cycle, yeah. yep. So we wanna know what's gonna happen to that carbon. But not only is permafrost degradation affecting carbon, it's affecting our global water, our food supply, and weirdly, the future of travel. We're seeing a lot of test case scenarios where vehicles, snow machine, things like that are being sucked into rivers because we now can't really fully predict when rivers are gonna freeze and thaw. I think it's sometimes a bit of a mystery to people outside of science how scientists go about finding answers to their questions. So I asked Amanda to explain how she does her research and what the impact of that research is. Literally, it's us with like a little backpack with something behind us and we're like walking <laughs> around. So we'll use electrical resistivity tomography, ground penetrating radar, and we are making a 3D map of what's thawed and what's frozen. Then we would go in and collect soil cores. I'm oh. fully covered in mud, <laughs> in a Tyvek suit. I'm in there. What exactly are you looking for? So the soil freezes in the Arctic from the top down. Okay. There's the upper portion of the soil column. That portion of the soil freezes and thaws every year. Okay. And then a solid frozen barrier. And this is what happens at that transition zone. This is what's called segregation ice. These transition zones tell us about what was going on 20,000 years ago. On the surface, which is more kind of what I study, those are present time transition zones. And you can imagine there's at that interface, that's thawed, but you have this freezing front. So you have basically 
kind of acidic pour waters from the watershed that are pushed deeper and hit this iron layer. Okay. So what we're seeing is late September, early October is just this amazing time for this mass flush okay. of redox active elements into watersheds. Melting permafrost is not just affecting elevation changes and shifting landscapes, it's affecting CO2 levels in the atmosphere and unexpected things like the amount of iron in your water. What does that mean for people when you flood these reactive metals into the watershed? You've now changed a lot of different characteristics. One being when that water is going to freeze. Imagine a tank that's now going over a river that's supposed to be frozen. It's gonna change how we're predicting when we should travel. Other impacts like microbial content, also carbon, whether we're releasing more carbon dioxide in the atmosphere or actually sequestering carbon, it's going to change what plants are able to survive there. We can test our tools here, figure out if they work, and then take them to places where there's rapid change going on and figure out how much unfrozen water we're seeing. Got it. So I came into the permafrost tunnel thinking I was gonna see some mammoth tusks. I came in thinking I was gonna learn a little bit about how scientists do research on ice in the ground. I did not realize how big of an impact permafrost will have to daily life and will have to the future of our planet. Plus, some of the research going on here is just cool, like the mammoth bones. And NASA comes in here. And it's incredible to me that this is the only place where scientists can do this depth of research because it's the only permafrost tunnel in the world. It was incredible to be there, heartening to see the hard work scientists are doing. And of course, our time in Alaska was pretty cool too. Thank you so much for watching and happy physicsing.